Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great weekend to begin with. This is the price report number 31. I'm going to have some interesting analysis in this one. The very first of which is the follow-up from the last week's technical price report that I had. And the second one is some interesting, uh, you know, events that occurred in the last couple of days in the network and my analysis of that. So let us dive first straight into the what I had presented the previous time regarding the price movements. So, well, I had indicated that about, you know, about this point, which happens to be about August 16, which is a couple of days from now, there is likely to be a breakout because uh, when we breach this particular line that we have, just give me a second, yeah. When we breach this particular uh, technical line that we have, we have a breakout to the upside. That is what I was expecting. It's, it's already played out that way. We This breakout line was about 23,000 and last week we were trading around 22,000 levels and we did touch, we did breach above this and we also see daily close. So if we come to the weekly charts, we don't, we don't have a weekly close yet above this particular level. So I'll be waiting and watching on that. Also to note the this is the hash ribbon for the miners and the hash ribbon has been turning out to be positive. And I had in indicated before that there are two logical scenarios that can play out. Should Bitcoin go towards 30,000, the miners who had, who were on the brink of capitulation, they will take this as an opportunity to sell their stash so as to sit in cash. Or if there is really, you know, we are really coming out of the bear zone, then they will take it as an op opportunity to actually not sell it and accumulate it. So if we move back to the daily zone, this is also pretty clear that the health is coming back. This usually historically, this whenever this happens, it's always, you know, when it turns around, it turns into a, a greenish territory. It doesn't really go back down again. So this is hopeful that this is going to turn into green in the coming days. And Having said this, now if I superimpose this into something called the BitMEX funding rate, funding rate is basically when traders take position either long or short. So the longs pay the short for holding their position and shorts pay the longs uh, a fee to holding position. So that is what kind of dictates also the direction of the markets. And what happens, let's say during during a, a bear phase is that the funding rate tends towards negative and it slowly creeps towards a positive territory and we have seen this time and again play out and even in the in the previous year when we had like a you know a, a kind of a peak before the next major peak in november the funding rate was negative and slowly creeps to the positive territory and this is the same kind of pattern where we capitulated about in 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 may somewhere around that first time the funding rate started reducing and then we have started going you know going back up towards the positive territory and usually whenever this happens guys there is a high probability of us with uh, with a large breakout and usually large breakout to the upside so what i am what my thinking is based on the chat patterns is like we, we're going to have some kind of explosive move in the coming days, likely to the upside. Uh, based on the data that I'm seeing, I'm seeing that there is a high chance of an explosive move to the upside. And what is the target there? I think the very first target will be 30,000. And if that crosses, it's going to be, uh, it's going to go up higher. And the next in line is the event that transpired uh, the day before and yesterday we saw the transactions reaching 61000 transactions in a day making it the all time highs in monero history um, before anything i would like to just touch upon the concept that i understand about how the whole thing happened and what probably might have transpired so whenever a user in a in a wallet from your wallet you send a transaction it goes into something called the transaction pool i understood as a memory pool but i think he must had uh, corrected me there 
So this gets into a uh, transaction pool where the it's like a waiting room for the transactions, right? They they keep waiting, and there is no upper limit for really the the transaction pool. So transaction can just wait here, and then it gets mined. It just picks up picked up by a miner into a block, you know, like in the blockchain. So they get picked up every two minutes. A, a block is mined, and this gets filled up with the transactions. And just for perspective, each transaction is about 1.9 kilobyte on average. It can be less, it can be more. Therefore, the how many transactions can fit into a block? The block has a size of 300 kilobyte. That's at least until the previous version. I don't know what's in, in the current version, but I think it remains the same. I will come up on that. So we can fit about 160 to 200 transactions in a, in a block. That's what is seen, and what happened yesterday is that the transaction pool uh, just transaction pool was filled up with about 200 2200 trans transactions waiting in the waiting room and you could see that in the transaction street that currently the memory pool count as they say or transaction pool is about sitting at 10 and 12 and that's usually the average case uh, i don't see it exceed beyond 100 200 so what happened let me just clear this guy up so what happened yesterday is the uh, so all the blocks started getting filled up until 300 kilobyte and the the reason the miners are not able to add more than 300 kilobyte is so you know if they can add more transaction and each transaction has a fees they can earn more right but for each block that is mined they get the block reward of 0.6 xmr per block which is the tail emission which is constant plus the, the set of transaction fees. So if you are the miner who binds a block, you would get this plus the transaction fees. And what happens if, if you can, you know, if, if, it, if you are, you're allowed to exceed 300 kilobyte, you know, may, maybe make it 350 kilobyte, but then the reward of 0.6 XMR per block, that gets reduced proportionately. So let's say you start getting 0.5 XMR. But if, if you can find those transactions in the memory, in the transaction pool, which can compensate such that you can get more than 0.6 XMR per block, then why not? They can do that, but it's kind of hard to do that. So they don't do that. So the block started getting filled up until with 300 kilobytes per transaction for about 100 block. And what happens is when the transactions are filled, for up to 100 blocks, something called the dynamic block sizing kicks in. So if the average of last 100 blocks is uh, is greater than or equal to 300 kilobytes, this re revoking of reward per block is removed. So they can extend, expand up to, somebody can correct me here, up to 600 kilobytes. And that is when exactly transaction, more transactions started getting included in the block. Um, and the uh, the, the transaction pool started getting cleared up. The waiting room started getting cleared up. And I think this was, this happened for a period of two to three hours when people were not able to send transactions from their wallet. They had to pay higher fees, of course. And I think uh, that is what I, you can see it from this particular list. Yes, day before yesterday, all the, uh, you know, it was 300 kilobyte plus, And I think it was at some point, 3.310 kilobytes, dynamic size, block sizing kicked in, I think practically for the very first time. So there were like some good takeaways that happened. It was a great set stress tester for the network, what happened. And I think it was also quite exciting because we see, I see the block size increase here. So this is how I see the things played out. It was a, a testing time for all of us in the, in the ecosystem. And um, I, interestingly enough, I think MineXMR, people thought that MineXMR might have sent that. It could be possible that they send batch transaction, but it looked a little uh, strange to some of us that, you know, they would just send so many transactions on the last day. So that looked very, uh, very strange to me. However, uh, I think that is all I want to discuss from this uh, price report. Yes, on the last part, the uh, XMR USDT, I think the, the head and shoulder is in, still in play with a lower bound of $135 to higher bound of $180. Let's stick to, still stick to that. We have to break up above 180 with higher volumes. That is all from my side. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead. Ciao.